Welcome back to the channel and today we are continuing our crash lander survival experience and there's a couple of things I want to do before the finishing the final quest and one of those things is there's something called a claw gun and this does not exist in vanilla survival so I want to experience what this is about it says it's a sniper like gun that uses bear claws as ammo now uh i was looking through my chest here and i have 23 bear claws right now bears are pretty hard to i, I don't know where they live they're just like i just randomly come across them and uh so it's hard for me to go search out bears but with the 23 bear claws that i have uh it might be kind of cool actually wasn't there a quest in here that involved a bear claw gun of sorts but anyway, the other thing on my list of things I want to try out, it's probably going to be really time consuming, hopefully not like too much, but I want to actually try to uh, just create a crafting chain just to like see what that's like. But I'm going to have to make a lot, I'm going to have to convert a lot of these chests into vacuum chests. So it's going to be a bit of a process, but let me go into HQ real quick. Uh, let me drive over there because apparently I'm not right at the entrance right now. I just got a compact computer from a chest. That was actually a pretty good chest. All right, I'm looking for anybody but Justin. Oh, hi, Mark. Hello. Uh, let's see. Bring two beacons. Three large explosive canisters. Okay, these ones have nothing to do with bear claws, and I don't need. I don't really need the stuff that he is offering. So where is Ivan? Very. Nope, that's Justin. Justin's the food guy. Oh, here we go. Fifty pineapple record. Uh, oh, twenty-five bear claw. I think that's the thing that I saw that it had to, I thought it would make, maybe I would get a bear claw gun, but it's just ammo. I already have ammo and growing 50 pineapple is going to be a whole like multi-episode process in and of itself. So let's just go back to base and build the thing. All right. Where? Oh yeah. Home base is that way. For some reason I was thinking that way. I think that's Bill's house though. So I just got to, oh wait, can I drive up this cliff right here? Can I drive? Ready? Oh, I got this. Okay. Okay, I thought this was an impossible path to go without having to use my lift to bring my vehicle up. This maybe isn't so bad after all. Oh, no, no, we're good. We can still keep going. All right. Oh, no, we're still being, like, guided by a cliff. I want to go directly that way. I'm going to follow this cliff, though, and see if it kind of, like, help makes me able to turn towards my base. Because it'd be nice if the Forterra HQ wasn't as bad as I originally thought to uh, drive back from. I mean, so far, the cliffs are still blocking me. Oh, look at this. Now they're turning me that way. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta do a lift thing. It would, be, it would have been so nice if I could go straight driving, but looks like I gotta do a lift. Hey, you need a lift? Why, yes, I do. All right, now we can drive directly towards our icon, our beacon. Wow, look at this view. Oh, this is kind of cool. That desert. Actually, it might not even be that desert. My home might be on the other side of that mound. My home is in a desert, though. But I don't actually know if it's that desert or not. But this view is crazy. All right, I can see the forest that I don't want to go through. So I'm going to go to the right of that or the left. I can't see the left of the forest very well. Yeah, I'll go to the left of the forest. It looks like my uh, home is on the other side of that mountain. So it's still pretty far. But yeah, if I go to the left of this forest, looks like the best way to go. Being able to see the whole forest tile in one view is kind of epic and useful. Oh, there's a bear. Okay, I'm going to kill the bear. Hold on. Get away from my vehicle. Get away from my vehicle. I'm over here. Okay. I've done this before. <laughs> Ow, he got me. Oh my goodness, he got me again. What the? I, I was able to avoid his attacks last time. He's getting me with every single attack. What? I can't avoid him. Why can't I not avoid him? All right, I gotta rely on my ammo. Oh my goodness. The last time I meleeed a bear, I was just backing up and slightly to the right and he missed me with every single attack. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm about to die. All right, this is my first death. My first death in Crash Lander, but I should respawn right there. And the problem is I don't have any of my gear on me. I was in my bed, so it just changed to daytime. Okay, now. I gotta get my gear. How do I do this? I got my tools. Okay, how do I do this? I got an idea. He's on the lift with me! <laughs> Alright, come on, get the gear! Get, get the gear. I'm gonna die just by getting the gear. Okay, there we go, there we go. Alright, let's do the lift method. I haven't, I forgot about this. 
There we go. All right, well, that was hard. Well, I got four more shots when, when we create the bear claw gun. Hmm, I should have like, I should have ran him over first, maybe. It's risky though, you don't want him to damage your vehicle. I don't know what kind of damage they do to materials. Those wolves didn't stand a chance. All right, look at that, I was like right near home too. There's my antenna. Can't even see it until you're like, right in the tile range. All right, so I'm gonna wanna build a crafting station at some point. Right now, the priority is the bear claw. We got a lot of stuff to craft, basically. But uh, let me, I'm just gonna get the bear claws out of here so I have them for now. How are we doing on ammo? I got 29 ammo left. I don't have a farm or anything. Uh, let me get all my workbenches out. Okay, so for the bear claw gun, we need a spud gun, metal, circuit board, and component kits. I think I'm kind of low on component kit. What does it take to make them again? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, actually, what does it take to make circuit boards? Oh, I think I'm pretty good. I think I'm doing pretty good on materials. Actually, while I'm here, let's start converting raw metal into metal. Uh, where is... Here's my input chest. We have a decent amount of raw metal in there. And then my output chest. There we go. So let's start this. There we go. All right, that'll be on repeat for however long that takes. Oh yeah, I also need, uh, I need a spud gun. I don't want to get rid of my spud gun for the sake of a bear claw gun. Even though I only have 30 spuds left, I actually have, I think I might have just the same amount of bear claws as spuds. But I need to build another one of these. So I need a spud bow component and a barrel and advanced tool handle component. I think I already have a base component. There we go. So now I need the barrel, which requires two pipes. But I also need this, which requires screws and metal too. But I think I got plenty of metal too. All right, I need two of those pipes and screws. Do I have any excess screws right now? I have one. All right, well, I can craft the pipe. After these screws are done, I can craft the handle component. Now let's get, do I have circuit boards? I have six circuit boards. Oh, look at that. I can already craft it. I'm just gonna craft it now. And then right now I'm just uh, crafting what I need to rebuild my, my normal spud gun back. All right, and there we go. Now we got the bear claw gun and we've got the normal spud gun getting replaced. Oh, I'm looking forward to this bear claw gun. Let's see what it looks like. All right, whoa. Okay, I want to compare, because this is like supposedly more like a sniper with a lower rate of fire, but more powerful. So does it zoom in more than a spud gun? Let's see. There's, I'm going to zoom in on that rock. It does. It's not a whole lot if you're going to say it's a sniper, but it is a little bit more of a zoom. You can see there's a pretty big difference, actually. It's, I mean, it's not a huge difference. It's enough of a difference for sure. I wonder like I I wonder how uh, how much more damage it does and also how accurate it is. All right, hold on. Before we test this thing out though, there's a couple of things I need to look up how to build. So, we have a smeltery. Now we need the auto version of the rest of these. So, the assembler, the metal manufacturer, and I'm not going to focus on the carpenter bot and the chemistry station. So, it looks like we're going to have enough metal block 3, vacuum pipe connector component, I need more component kits. I need eight component kits total, and I need six vacuum pipe connector components. I'm gonna need a lot of vacuum pipe connector components. So let me refresh my memory on what these take. Component kits? No, I refuse. All right, fine, fine. There goes all my component kits. Let's make some more component kits. All right, beeswax, circuit boards. Circuit boards takes that and copper. Copper and metal, was that it? Copper and metal. I'm just gonna make a bunch of circuit boards now and then get some of that beeswax out of there. Spent all that time getting that beeswax and it is still coming in handy. So this gives me two component kits. I needed eight, so then I have zero right now. So two, four, six, and eight. All right, and then those component kits will allow me to craft all of these things. I need to craft another workbench though, because in order, uh, I need to use a workbench in order to make the thing, but the workbench is also part of the ingredients. I have a scrap workbench. I doubt this thing allows me to craft that though. No, this is just, this, it, well, I need the scrap workbench actually to craft a regular workbench. So wood block, <gasps> I don't think I have any wood block. I was wrong. 
I actually have a lot of wood block. Okay, well, I can just... It actually wasn't that bad to craft another one of those. I need more metal, though. Good thing we're making a bunch. All right, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and collect these. And then that's the metal one, metal working bench. So let's build the automated version of that. Metal manufacturer. Look at that. It's all in there. And then chemistry bench. Here we go. Chemistry station. Ooh, we are improving some stuff. And then this gives me the workbench, which then allows me to craft the assembler. And there's all my vacuum pipes, component kits, and benches. Look at this. We got our, our crafting station is underway. What is this? Container probe. Toggles when a set number of container slots are filled. Attach it anywhere on the desired container. It has two modes. So if a container gets like to a certain level or if it fills up, you could have an indicator or a some function that happens. So you could have like when you're auto crafting stations, if a container fills up with materials, you could then have a like you'd wait till that point for a vacuum pump to then extract the materials to somewhere else. That's interesting. I could see that there, there could be a lot of potential uses for that. All right. Oh boy, I can't carry this. Oh, oh, this is a big downside. These benches I can carry with me anywhere. These things don't have that capability. All right, so there is the outputs are gonna be interesting to try to manage. It's gonna be really like, the, the big thing with these is you could have all the inputs go into all of them, but then like, where do you have them go out to? I guess they could have their own separate outputs each. You could have like output stations for the various types, like a metal output station. So is this the input and this is the output? I think that's the case, right? Yeah, this is the output over here. All right, so I already used all of my raw metal. All right, what else we got? We, we got the other ones. Here is the chemistry station, all right? And then here is the assembler. Oh, that's confusing. Oh, the assemb assembler looks like the old refined bot. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Speed boots? Since when were these a thing? When did these become a thing? Pressing R reload will double your speed for a limited amount of time. Consumes two batteries, though. What? I thought those were definitely not there before. Right? Oh, wait, is that specific to this manufacturer? Hold on, because if I go to the workbench and go to... Oh, no, they are here. This has to be different. This has to be, like, new in an update, right? Is there anything else interesting that I'm missing? The bearing limiter. You can change your bearing limits so they don't go past certain angles. Liquid sensor. Oh, you can have a... Wait. It senses liquid, be it water, chemicals, or oil. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're all floating liquids. I mean, liquid you can float in, not liquid that float. Can you, like, say whether or not liquid floats? If liquid is the thing that, that causes floating? I mean, some liquids float on top of other liquids. I guess it just depends on what's underneath. Only one liquid is the non-floating liquid. Whatever the densest liquid is, that one's not the floating one. But if you put a denser one in, now that liquid becomes floating. I guess that's what we call scrap science. Oh, there's decouplers. That's kind of cool. Man, it takes metal two and glass and circuit boards. Why does it take a circuit board to build vacuum pipes? I feel like vacuum pipes are those things that you want to just create mass amounts of. I feel like they should have relatively low cost. Vacuum pipe decoupler. I'm going to have to learn how these vacuum things work for sure. Maybe not. Like the system I have in mind, I don't even think it needs these. It's hard to tell though because I haven't like crafted a chain, like a crafting chain in this mod before. All right. Well, let's see. I want metal. Is this the metal one? Metal manufacturer. I'm just gonna like replace them for now. Uh, I don't have, wait, the wood one. I don't think I wanna make a, well, I maybe I do. Maybe I do wanna make a wood one, okay? I need three more component kits, two more vacuum pipe connectors. All right, one, two, three more component kits. And then I need two more component kits on top of that. This stuff gets expensive real quick. All right, there we go. Two more vacuum pipe connectors. And this is to make the woodworking station all right pick up the woodworking bench and there we go i'm glad i did that quest that got me all the metal block three it's coming in handy now all right and there it is so now i can oh let me put this down now that's what the woodworking one looks like oh there's a saw there's saw blades and stuff that's pretty cool this looks like a wood resource rod these just look like resource rods hmm. there's a bed and then there's a wooden framed bed doesn't look like there's a difference in its functionality but i guess this wooden frame bed is more durable if you don't if you're 
if your bed's getting attacked for whatever reason, writable notes lets you write any information onto it. What? It will be displayed when you look at them. That's pretty cool. That'd be good for like multiplayer purposes. I don't need this out here anymore. So now I've got all these. So what I'm thinking is, I don't know. I don't know where to build this, but I have all the stations now at least. So I can create like, if I have input chests, I can create uh, repeatable crafting things. But now that's the thing is I need a whole bunch of vacuum chests, which means I need a whole bunch of these. So I'm just going to make a whole bunch of these. Oh, and I'm out. Now I need a whole bunch of component kits. And there you go. All right, now I need more beeswax and circuit boards. Let's make more circuit boards here. Nope, apparently the metal manufacturer isn't where you make circuit boards. All right, we got a lot of stuff crafting. It's going to be difficult to try to convert the chests I have into uh, vacuum chests because they have stuff in them. But I do have an empty chest on me. That can be like my deposit chest. I transfer the stuff with the stuff. I, I transfer the chest with the stuff in them into an empty chest, convert it to a vacuum chest, put the stuff back. That can be the system. All right, so I already got a chest on me. So to make a vacuum chest, I think I just have the regular refine bot. Interactive vacuum chest. I need three vacuum pipe connectors for a single vacuum chest. All right, I need to bring my workbench back out because I need multiple sources of crafting here. Oh, no, it's my metal manufacturer that actually does the vacuum pipes. I forgot. All right, there we go. Crafting a whole bunch of vacuum tubes. Need more component kits. Let's go ahead and just make more here. Now I have an empty vacuum chest. So I can take like, mm, do I have another empty chest somewhere? They have this stuff in my inventory as well. And I don't want to get it confused with the stuff in the chests. I might, need, I might need to just make a normal chest. All right, here we go. We got our other spare chests. These, these chests are transfer chests. These are what's going to allow us to transfer things. All right, now that I have that, I can actually instantly convert that into a vacuum chest as well. So we're already on our way. And then while that is doing its thing, I need probably more of these, which means I need more component kits, which I can collect from here and get crafting some more and some more circuit boards while I'm here and some more of these. All right, there's that. And now I've got the spare chest, which I can place right there. So I will put all of my stuff my current stuff into this chest. That way I can now take stuff out of a chest that is non-vacuum. So this is my mining vehicle chest. I will put that all in the now empty chest, which is vacuum. And now I transfer my stuff. I should really just transfer the necessary stuff, which is what component kits and vacuum things, right? Yeah, component kits and vacuum. No, just, just connectors, just vacuum connectors and the chest. Okay, now I can create another one of these. So now I take another non-vacuum chest. Here, I'm gonna put this out of the way. This is my personal chest. So I got new vacuum chest, which I now place down and take the components out of this one and place them into this one. And this gets converted into another vacuum chest. Okay, the system is starting to lock into place. It's a little confusing. Need more of these. Now I can get the next chest ready to be converted. All right, so this chest is not ready yet because I need to get the other chest out. There we go. This one I can now put back. Okay, hold on. Finish. I need a, I need an organization system here. Finish chest in the front of the vehicle. This is a finished chest in the front of the vehicle. This is my personal chest, stays there. This is an empty chest ready to become a finished chest. All right, there, all that stuff gets, no, I just put it right back where it came from. So I take it out of that chest and then I put it, everything except the vacuum pipes into that chest. This chest doesn't have a whole lot in it, but it is now finished. Now this chest is ready for conversion. And while that chest is converting, I will get another non-vacuum chest ready and then I take everything out of this one there we go now this chest is emptied and ready for conversion so oh here's the system yeah it's it's dialing in now while that is crafting I then fill in the chest that I just got with the old chest stuff and now this chest has become converted chest which I can then place in the converted chest area and now I select the next chest for conversion there it is and I take everything out of this chest grab this one pick this up start the next 
Conversion, put the new chest down and fill it back up. All right, I got a system down for converting all my chests. This is good. I'm gonna need more vacuum pipes soon though already. All right, next up, this is my uh, important parts chest. All right, I am out of vacuum, enough vacuum stuff to do another chest. So I need to get the vacuum pipes going again. So that means I need to collect these. The circuit boards were for that stuff. Okay, hold on. I need metal. Let's see, now this is where my, my personal chest has some of the materials I needed. There's metal. Okay, good. All right, I'm good there. Gonna need a lot more component kits though. I have some crafting, but not enough because I need more circuit boards. Oh boy. It's a process. All right, but got another one of these chests down. This is now a finished chest. And now we are ready to switch out another chest. This is my like battery and other stuff chest, apparently. Really putting all my organizational skills on display here with just what kind of random stuff is in every single chest. All right, now this chest is ready to convert. I have two more chests left. Woo, we're getting there. All right, I got already got two more completed chests here. This is like, it goes quicker than I think it's going to go as far as like the conversion process. Like all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, this chest isn't waiting to be converted. This is already converted. All right, now we got this one is ready for the last chest. Here it is. The thing is my seed chest. Oh, it's my food chest. Wait, didn't I have a seed chest? Did I do the seed chest already? Am I missing one? Oh, the seed chest is already a vacuum chest. Okay, cool. All right, so pick that up and here we go. Final. Oh wait, I need one more. Is there one more? There's exactly one more. Final conversion. Now all of my chests that I've used are vacuum compatible. And then here's the final chest, which is empty because I needed an empty chest to do all this. So here are all of my chests. So theoretically, if I just link all these chests together, and then vacuum tube to each of these manufacturing stations, they should pool from all of my resources. So what is the most space efficient way to link this number of chests together or any number of chests? So they can only if uh, they can only link on the top and two sides. You could just do like a straight up line like this. But then that's going to be just really long. Now, if you do like this or like that and then on top like that, then if this one's facing upwards. We can do like a diagonal where it's like a vertical zigzag. So we got that, 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 that. And then you see what I mean? Then this one that way. And then this one flips up upwards. Yeah, so these are all linked together as well. So let's just do a quick test here. If I take my refine bot and I put the input side. Now, if I go to the materials, we should be able to see what we have. If I just find the stuff that has the right things. All right, so this is 21 cotton. Uh, this, this all stuff takes cotton. This takes water. We have the water there. This takes exhaust pipe. I have an exhaust component in there somewhere. So yeah, you can see it's just kind of, it has access to all the materials that are in those particular chests. Oh, apparently I have a vacuum pipe somewhere too. But the thing is, in order to uh, actually build out this crafting system, we're gonna have all these source containers and then they need to link with vacuum network to every other manufacturing thing in one system. Let me get all my personal stuff back. All right, I feel like we, we have a good starting point. Now I just need to figure out like, where do I want to place this system? Maybe you guys can help me out with that in the comments. All of this stuff, I'm going to want to try to build into this universal crafting system where I just deposit all my stuff into chests and I should probably color code chests to like figure out what genre of material, what category of material goes into each chest. So if I need to pick stuff out for myself, I'll have access. So for instance, even this, uh, the smeltery needs access to all the ore. And then some of the others, the smeltery needs to output. Ooh, that makes stuff harder. Because now the smeltery needs to output. But then I also want that output to be accessible. We need to have like a loop. Does that work? If I connect the output chest back into the input chest, will, will they then read the output chest as also an input chest? I have a lot to learn for this stuff. Yeah, if you guys have any advice on this, if you have any experience creating like uh universal crafting chains. Let me know any tips, thing, any mistakes to avoid, because I feel like 
there's some mistakes I can make for sure. Now that I've converted all my chests and that's all ready to go, uh, let's go ahead and test out finally this bear claw gun. Kind of like the main event I've been holding off because I want to just get a little bit of a head start on this. All right, I'm just going to take all my chests out of here now. Here, like, even if I, if I just link them, whoops. If I just link them all because of this part of the chain is all linked together. Now I can just go in a straight line this way from either layer and it still links into the same system, which is kind of convenient. Wait, do I have my bear claws on me? I got 27 bear claws. Excellent. All right, let's sleep. Is it dark enough to sleep until next day? Looks like it is. Let's find a bear. No, let's, we'll, we'll test it on a wolf first. I wonder how many shots a wolf takes. Like, I don't have, I only have 27 shots to try this thing out with. I don't know how many shots a wolf takes. Um, I will kind of want to do that, like, like a test, a good test to see. Shooting with a spud gun versus a bear claw gun. See how many, how many shots difference it is. Because the description, a powerful sniper-like gun versus spud gun with a single potato shot. So it seems the word powerful leads me to believe it's stronger. I don't really want to do a cow because they're going to run away. I don't want to miss. Is it going to be like hard for me to find a wolf now? Oh, hey, it's my crashed ship. Oh, there's a wolf here. Oh, and a bunch of chests too. All right. There's only one wolf though. All right, let's do a quick test. I'm, I'm going to try to do this as like, look at his eye. Oh, okay. okay. All right, he's after me now. One, two. Just want to make sure I don't miss. Three. Four shots. Okay, that's not a lot. Four shots with the uh, spud gun. Now we need to find another wolf. But first, treasure. All right, now we got the golden treasure chest. Anything? Another driver's seat. Okay. A lot of driver's seats. I should be building more vehicles. But uh, I think I just saw there's a wolf over here. Hopefully it doesn't come after me because I want to get some distance. Really want to test out the aim of this thing. Let's see how many shots it takes. Look at that. Perfect. I didn't think it was going to be that strong. That was pretty impressive. I want to find a bear now. How many shots did it take? I think it took like... Did it take 25 shots to kill a bear with a spud gun? I have way more than... I, I have enough to do that if it was the same damage with the bear claw gun. So... I don't know how, but I want to find a bear. That was impressive. I am very impressed with how strong that was. It's at least four times stronger. Than the spud gun. All right, how do I find a bear though? Okay, here. Oh, no, he's moving. Oh, wait. Okay, he stopped, stopped, stopped. All right, there's a lot of wolves here. How much bullet drop do you think there is? Wow. Wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop it. I'm wondering if it auto adapts to your aiming because it totally shot a little bit higher and then the bullet dropped, the bear claw dropped to the wolf. So I'm wondering if, like, no matter where you're aiming, it kind of auto. I never heard the wind like that before in this game. We have like wind sounds now. But yeah, I'm wondering if it auto adjusts its aim. So like no matter where you're... What is that? What was that? Weird things are happening. It's stormy right now. But anyway, I don't have a lot of... I, I don't want to like do too many crazy tests because I don't want to waste ammo. We're getting like wind streaks and everything. But the, what I was trying to say and can't finish the sentence because I'm distracted by new things happening is um, I kind of wonder if no matter where you aim, if you don't have to think about bullet drop, if it just places the bullet at whatever distance you're aiming, which would be kind of cool. Now, where are the bears? Achievement unlocked back to the future? Where did I like drive 88 miles an hour or something? Where is this going? I've definitely never been in this direction before. These smoke trails are kind of confusing me. I keep thinking it's like a, th a thing burning through the atmosphere. Whoa, what is that? What was that? It looked like a little sparky blob. What? Oh, it happened again. What was that? I heard the noise of it like going like something fell out of the sky and splattered on the ground. Oh, there's a bear. There's a bear, there's a bear, there's a bear. Okay, 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 okay. Come after me. All right, ready? One. Two. Three. Four, ow, five, six, seven, eight. Did that one hit it? That might not have hit it. I'm gonna say eight anyway. Nine, ten. This is more than I was expecting. 
11. Was it 25 shots? Because if it was four times more powerful, then it should have been... Oh. Hmm. Should have been closer to like six shots, shouldn't it? It was 11 shots, though. Is my vehicle going into the water? It's going into the water. All right, so I, I killed a bear. Wait, did I get his bear claws? I have 21 shots, probably. So I had 27 minus 11. Yeah, so I have more than I should have. All right, I want to do an aim test now. Uh, I need something that really far away to aim at, though. Let me get out of here. All right, look at that wolf. That wolf is very far away. What is this? All right, well, anyway, that wolf is very far away. I'm just going to aim at it and see what happens. Okay, there is a bit of bullet drop. That one I feel like should have got it. Ah, oh, there's recoil. Oh, I got him. The recoil actually pushed me back a little bit. Wow, look at that. Yeah, the spud gun has no recoil. This thing actually has a decent amount of recoil. I just got really confused when I saw that I could hop in my vehicle without a chest being in my face. So I was like, what happened to my vehicle? All right, hopefully I can find my way back because it was a little bit of a weird land shape to get here. I hope I don't get stuck. All right, I have successfully made it back. I went a lot farther than I was hoping I would have to go just to find a bear for the spud, for the bear claw launcher. But I'm going to fill up on some gas real quick. And all right, we are back and ready to figure out what is next for our crafting stations. Hey, look at all this stuff. So if you get any tips and tricks, let me know down in the comments below. And uh, that's what the next episode is going to be dedicated to. What should our crafting place look like? Where should I put it? Should I put it like right next to the antenna? Or should I like put it somewhere else around here? Let me know. If you guys enjoyed this episode, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.